Your show has done wonders for me, and i got to thank you. If I had been listening to you when I was 23, I may not have been a single mom. I just want to let you know I broke up with my fiancé July 4th to celebrate my independence. This is an amazing thing that you do. It is wildly entertaining, and I just want to thank you for that. I don't think you have the right to call them a bitch because they're a victim. If they lie to us, they're a bitch. Okay, I'm not going to stay a listener. I owe you so much, Tom. Your advice is fantastic, man. If people think that all you're doing is sitting around trying to get ratings, I know you are, but if, if people think that's all you're doing, they are sorely ignorant. On their own. I mean, there's, there's a lot more going on here than just getting ratings. And I thank you for the genuine, amazing advice that you kick out every day. I have to thank you for helping me raise my 13-year-old son. Whenever someone asks him, what have you learned? He has three things. He says, I know about a paternity test, a DNA test. I know about a prenuptial agreement, and I know about condoms. I work for a company over here in uh, Anaheim. And uh, they're thinking about having a Christmas party. And if they do, oh, my God, Tom. I'm going to be playing Mario Brothers all night, laying the pipe, man. Is you can that call so? me Mario and Luigi, man. That's all I'm going to be doing. Mark, what did you want to say here to Nick? I want to tell Nick that he should look in the mirror every morning and say, I want to stop having sex when I'm 40 because that's when she'll want to ha stop having sex. And if that's cool, <laughs> jump right in. Hmm. So that's how it is, do you think? I don't think. You know. <laughs> Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. Well, she's, Tell, got, three more, she's got three more years to finish, finish her Ph.D. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that Ph.D. to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. Then when you've got all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. Thank sounds you like you, sounds like you're ready tonight. I'm always ready, Tom. Is that so? <laughs> Especially after listening to you, you get me all worked up. Ooh! Hang on a second here, Mike. What do you want to say to Roger? Hey, Roger. Let me tell you what. Once every two weeks when you're engaged means once every four months when you're married. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I know. It seems like it's only going one way, which is negative. No, no you're a fool if you stay if you stay with that. Dean, why are you hanging up on those calls? Almost all the lines are lit. He hangs up on everybody before knowing what they're calling him. Then I get the emails. They say, I tried to call in. I didn't get to say one word. They have a board almost full of calls, and he hangs up on all of them. That could have been, my God, that could have been, who knows who that, it could have been the president calling in. It could have been anybody. Is that Tom Likas there? I want to talk to him. No, you know what, Dean? We're going to screen the calls on the air. <laughs> Don't even pick them up. Tom Likas show. Do you want to talk about last hour's topic or this hour's topic? This hour's topic. Oh, okay. Hang on there. The Tom Likas show. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Promise Ring. Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, well, did you want to talk about this hour's topic or last hour's topic? This hour's topic. Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, this is George Bush, the president. <laughs> <laughs> From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show on this Friday at one 800 5800 Eight six six. Alex on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, what's going on, brother man? Not much, Alex. Man, you know brothers are hardwired for the Tom Like Us one oh one. I do indeed. And uh I'm living out here in Vegas and um them dumb uh them dumb little bras that are coming to Vegas are just what I'm looking for. 
when it comes to writing my casino and bank in my pocket. <laughs> so come on, girls, and drop that money. Drop that coin because you're stupid and you don't know what's going on, but I got something for you. Hey, I just want to give you accolades, man. I wish you would do the financial thing a bit more, but you have done a service for us. I'm actually 33. My wife and myself, before you jump on me, are both uh, college educated, but I've listened to you for 10 plus years from LA to Vegas. And she's from the Philippine Islands, okay? Uh-huh. I met her in college over here. We both got our, our, our degrees, we both got our careers. And right now, I'm sitting on my lazy boy looking over the, Ve- the Vegas Strip. I was working in the casino business. I'm a casino manager. And, Tom, you have just put the game in, in focus. Ever since I met my girl, she has in, just adequately supported the Likus 101 rule, and I see the world through a 101 lens, let me tell you. I love that. You know, I, I sit in my office, a lot of guys sitting there playing the music and you know, trying to mack on the corporate secretaries, you know, just pretty much dumping the, either dumping their, their career out the window by, by doing that. And I got the podcast, man. I love it. I'm podcasting you in my office. I randomly got people walking in. Sometimes they're curious. Some guys know about you, but I'm, I'm spreading the golf all around Vegas, man. I'm spreading the golf it. all around Vegas. How great is that? It's, it's great, man. It's great. My girl is super thrifty and uh, she's, She's serious about her money. We do, we do have a joint bank account, but we also have our own bank account. The joint bank account pays the mortgage. And if I want to go see a movie, if I want to go take a trip, corporate-wise, she supports my career. I don't question her. She doesn't question me. Like you said, many a times, if you're going to get married over 25, which I did at 30, get your career on track. All these little, these little chumps out here talking about, I love her in 1920. Are you kidding me? I was loving life in the 20s. I was loving life. You're supposed to enjoy it. Don't waste it. Don't abuse, don't abuse yourself by taking something less than who you are. And get your act right and get your money straight. When your money's straight, your girls will come. It's just that easy. It's simple. I'm working on my career, getting it better. I'm listening to you. My dad has got his own business. He's listening to you. He's gave me the game. You solidified and cemented the game, and I just want to give you accolades on that, man. I love that. Thank you so much, Alex. Take care. You come to Vegas, you come holler at me. We're good to go. I'll take care of you, even though I know you don't need it. I will love to, you know, send you a bottle, man. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank you so much. Another satisfied customer. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Dan in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Good afternoon, Tom. Yes. Hey, what's up? So, yeah, I got this thing. I'm born with this, uh, this chick, right? And uh, she has four kids. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, man, but the sex is great. Like, seriously. Wow, she loves sex because she's got four kids. Oh, she should be put in a fame asylum or something. And what happens, when you, knock, what, what happens when you knock her up? Oh, no, I, I use a rubber. Right, and what happens if the condom leaks, cracks, or slips off? We're gonna have to take a go in the sun and drink some champagne. I think it's I a guess. hot tub you're not supposed to get in, but hey. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I misspoke. But no, I mean that's not really the deal. I mean, what? Just because she has four kids doesn't mean I. Can't. Yeah, but what, if I'm she not, gets I'm pregnant, you're screwed. Why well, be screwed with any chick? No, I mean, but the point is, you already know what this chick will do if she gets pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, sure, she will yeah, have I that think... baby, and you will be paying. Oh, well, yeah, I know, but that's why I'm careful. I, I'm extra careful, you know. But I, mean, I don't care how careful you are. Accidents happen. But that's, but that's what I'm thinking, because, like, I'm thinking I'm cutting her off because she started, like, uh, last time I she was, like, you know, I was leaving. And she's like, oh, I love you. And then she put her hands up to her mouth like she accidentally Oh, said, well, you know, Dan, like you that. are playing with fire now. You, you think so? Of course. Huh. Oh, man, but the, uh, the sex. I mean, well, seriously. find somebody else. Yeah, well, I already do. You then know, then go to them. I mean, oh, man. Oh, this, this, I mean, she's better, though. Like, I don't care. I mean, again, yeah. she's fertile myrtle. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? 
Oh, yeah. She is, how, how old is she? She's uh, 26. How many different fathers were these uh, kids? One, two, three. Four kids, three different guys. Yeah, a real winner. So she is I not mean, in any way discerning. She's not in any way careful about anything. She, does she collect? Like, does she get welfare? Uh, I don't ask. I really probably I not get into that. How about child support? Uh, she seems pretty broke. No, she just, she doesn't even have one of the kids. And as a matter of fact, so I don't think so. I doubt it. I mean, she can't have child support. She doesn't have the kids. So no. So she has three of them. Yeah. And is she getting child support for those three? No, no, no I'm sorry. Oh well, yeah, three three daddies, four kids. One guy, two with two kids. The rest of them, it's one kid. Yeah. <sighs> and so I'm assuming no, she doesn't get any. She can't get child support because she doesn't have the kids. Uh, the daddies have the kids. And what I mean, is it about? It? By the way, have you ever been the slightest bit curious? What kind of woman can't get custody of her own children? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's messed up. But that's why, why she's so good in the sack. Well, it could very well be, but it's also likely that she'll get pregnant again. Well, no, but, but these guys were stupid. I mean, they were, these guys were chumps. I'm not like that. Oh, right. I mean, they were like, right. You know, they were doing the dating thing and all that. And You're course. telling me that it's impossible that a condom would ever leak. It's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. <laughs> You're in denial. And now that she's telling you she loves you, you know, women have a habit of reaching down there. They tell you they just want to feel if the condom is still on. And they have a habit of, like, actually pulling it off a little bit. Is that what she was doing? That's enough. Hmm. Unbelievable. Kyle on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? Great. Hey, um, I'm calling to say thank you. Um, called in a few months ago uh, about a uh, girlfriend I had out in Florida who wanted to move out here to California with me, and, uh, and it was a bad situation. I ended up getting lucky with that. She uh, got arrested. and. Uh, oh, you got lucky. She got arrested. Yeah. and uh, But then about a week after she got arrested, she called and told me that she thought she might want to come down anyway because she she thought she was pregnant and she figured it was mine because I was there a few months ago and uh, so I told her something that I never would have been even thought of saying if I never listened to you uh, I told her that you know first I wanted an abortion you know if which she didn't and so I told her if it was mine and she had it you know I would first I'd make sure it had the DNA test and then I'd make sure it got taken away from her uh, and got taken care of because I knew, you know, I told her that I know she wouldn't. And she uh, called me back the next morning and said she'd already gone to the hospital and gotten a pregnancy test and that the the time frame of her pregnancy was off and that I shouldn't even worry about it, shouldn't even think about it. Has haven't talked to her since. So you don't know what happened? Yeah, well, I mean, she called me. She said she was pregnant, but she said not even to worry about it. That the time frame's off. What does that mean? Mine. The time frame's off. So she, said that they, they, she said they told her like how, you know, when she got pregnant, and that wasn't when I was out there in Florida. She could have just said that. Well, that, well, I I know, but I mean, she now she's she doesn't want uh, me to worry about it anymore. Well, that's she, what she, she said she wants, to you. She wants her husband to take care of the kid now. You know, she. I think she was hoping, you know, that I would I would be like, oh yeah, come come down here, you know, I'll take care of you and the kid. You know, but now I think she's going to want to stay up there with her well, husband. Hopefully you got lucky. Yeah. Told her I wanted to send me, uh, fax me over a couple things, you know, once she, once the baby's born and all that. Uh, were you using a condom, Kyle? I, I was, but, uh, you know, it broke. Yeah, that can happen. Mm-hmm. Even though the last guy said it's highly unlikely. Yeah, but it does. It happens. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I think I got lucky this time, and, and I mean, I... I I don't think I ever would have even thought to, to tell her that if I hadn't been listening to you for the past couple months. Well, I'm proud of you, Kyle. I really am. Thank you for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167-pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be drugly. 
You gotta be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the <laughs> evening. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Everything goes. Anything at all. Dean. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. I just wanted to call and tell you thank you so very, very much. For what? Uh, well, I came out here from Wisconsin about four and a half, almost five years ago. Got messed up with this, this stupid bitch, and I've never heard your show until the middle of May. And then I wised up, dumped that bitch just before my birthday, and I've been getting more ass in a toilet seat. Very nice. Excellent. I'm proud. Yeah, the the only downside is that we we uh, had a kid together. I'm 37 years Why old. Why did you do that? Well, I didn't I didn't know her very good before, and so you decided since she was a complete stranger, you'd have a baby with her. Well, we had sex, and I was stupid and un, uneducated with with uh, your teachings. And since I started listening to your show this past May. I dumped that bitch. So you were riding bareback all these years? Yep. Wow. You won't and, do that again, will you? Oh, hell no. I I got fixed, and I haven't told a single soul that I did it. And right now, well, I still wear a condom no matter what. Because I learned, just in case, if it does happen to break, like these other guys are saying, oh, it won't happen, it will. Of course it will. And now I have uh, custody of my son, and and everything's going great. And it's great because my son's blonde hair, blue eyes, and, and he's more or less my chick magnet. Is that so? Yeah, I, I use him to... To get into women's pants, and I got a, I got a mother that has two daughters, both right around twenty, and one's nineteen, the other one's twenty-one, and I'm doing all three of them. I love that. With a condom, I hope. Oh, of course, definitely. Glad to hear it. I'm proud. I just wanted to call and tell you thank you very much for straightening out my life and and uh, keep up the good work and teach all these young kids that think that they're smarter than you to uh, actually listen to you because you know what you're talking about. You're absolutely right, Dean. I couldn't agree with you more. one 800 800 tom Hugo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you, bro? I'm doing great. That's awesome. Let me just say that this is the first time that Dean, a.k.a. Alexejista, <laughs> let me talk before hanging up on me. <laughs> 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 and, um, man, I wanted to thank you, bro, because like a year ago, I was in a, in a hole that I couldn't get out of, and it was as if you reached down and helped me up, and I've been doing great so far. And um, I wanted to ask you a couple of... Uh, Days ago, you were talking. You, you were talking about trade schools and colleges. Yeah. And um, I've been trying to get into the um, radio industry. Yes. But you said that you wouldn't um, encourage your listeners to to go to a, a university for this type of career or a trade school or a trade school. Now, what's the best way to break into? Well, first of all, I do recommend going to university. Right. But I don't recommend studying broadcasting or communications. Right. Unless your plan is to be a journalist, and that means to write for, like, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, college is completely useless. Right. All right? So what I'd recommend you study is other useful things, things that are useful to know about, things that also could be alternative careers, because this business is changing as we speak. Right. You might have to be an entrepreneur. You might need some business skills. Right. You know, you might want to know about business administration. Uh, you might want to uh, learn about uh, uh, b computer uh, or other related skills, uh, software, hardware, what have you. Right. Uh, you definitely want to study stuff that's worth having. The people who teach radio right. in schools are people who weren't good enough to be on the radio. Right. That's why they teach it. Oh, okay. 
okay. Those who, you ever hear the old expression, those who can do, those who can't teach. Right. Nowhere is that more true than with radio. Right, because I came across this, um, this website, it's called Radio Connection, mm -hmm. and then so they, in, they interview, and then you could go to like a local, a local um, radio station, and then they teach you all the stuff and everything, and I don't know if that was a... I don't know that place in particular. There are many places that will charge you. Right. Uh, to essentially what they do is uh, on on bad radio stations, uh, and now they're doing it with things that aren't even radio stations. They're they're like on the internet, but they're not actually on the air. Yeah, right. They will charge you uh, for the airtime. Yeah, I've, I've I've read that before. So essentially, they take you, the person with no experience, and they put you on a radio station that has no audience. You could do that by yourself without. I mean, you could even get paid if you were willing to go to a place like. Um, you know, uh, Victorville, California, not Victorville. Uh, well, Victorville, also Porterville, California. Right. You know, Visalia. Right. Uh, or further up north, Redding, California. Right. You know, small towns with radio stations. Yeah. I, um, I also heard by um, in, being an intern, but um, I would have to be going to, to school for that. Yeah, and even then, um, you're an intern. And uh, what do interns do? learn they get lunch they get coffee they stand around a lot but at the end of your internship you're not guaranteed any kind of a job right i mean what you need most is to get on the air right and then learn in front of a small crowd that won't be very picky because there's not a lot of competition there's not a lot of people listening right that's what i did my place to go was stanton virginia and another place babylon long island right. i worked on the radio in those places and I learned my trade when no one could hear me make my mistakes. Right. So I suddenly, when I appeared on the air in Los Angeles, my God, I sounded like I knew what I was doing. Well, that's because I'd been doing it for years. Right. Right. And when I started, I made nothing. Right. Well, I know what I got to do. Are you willing to do that? I'm, I'm certain, yes, I would. Uh, because you have to be willing to do that. And by the way, you're going to be living on the cheap. Yeah, well, I mean, with greater uh, greater sacrifices, greater But rewards. still, think about it. Hey, wouldn't you rather be getting paid $300 a week to be on the radio than to have to pay 300 a week to be on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> well, certainly, yeah. So you'll be ahead of the game even though you'll be living poor. Yeah. Sure thing. I, I had another question. Um, you had mentioned something about the Kings leaving L.A. Now, is that true? or No, I never said any such thing. The Kings are not leaving L.A. They've oh, got Staples no, Center. I probably misunderstood. The company that owns the Kings owns Staples Center. Oh. They're not going anywhere. No, what I did say was that uh, uh, we were talking about David Beckham and the Galaxy playing a game in Rome. Right. At the Coliseum. Right. Oh, I see. By the way, that fell through the uh, naming rights for Herbalife at the uh, Roman Coliseum. So uh, I believe uh, I believe Scores has tacked their name out of that. So it's now the Scores Coliseum. Right, right. But that's going to be uh, in Rome, and there has not been a sporting event at the Coliseum in, God, at least 20, 30 years. Right. So uh, the folks uh, over there are uh, they're sprucing it up. I, I was in Rome. The scaffolding is up. They're putting the luxury suites in. And they are preparing for the arrival of David Beckham, and that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, uh, you know, the Galaxy has played a game in Australia, and right. they'll be playing this game at the Roman Coliseum. A lot of renovations going on over there. It's very exciting. Right. I know. You've seen the Roman Coliseum. I mean, the place is a dump, and, they, yeah. and they're fixing it up, and it's it's starting to look great. Yeah. Well, well, i got to thank you for your time. You know what? i, I got to thank Dean for actually putting me on. Um, the guy's cool. <laughs> I used to hate him for not just hanging up on me, but... Yes. He proved himself to be cool today. <laughs> well, as we always said, Alexa Hente approves, and the people are happy. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Guys dance to get in a girl's pants. Sounds like a bumper stick. I couldn't have said it better myself. I think you did. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Say hi to James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 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 You busy over um, there, James? Yes. No, no, no Tom. Hey, listen. Let me tell you something. 
a few weeks ago, right? I got hooked up with this one chick, right? And then she she asked me. And first week I was doing all right. Second week she comes and she goes, James, you know what? You don't need to put use a condom. I, you know what I did, Tom? What? I just walked out of there. <laughs> That's what we tell you to do. Yeah, and then and then let me tell you something else. A couple of days later, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. she me, and then she goes, James, you know what? What can I do or show you? You know, to I really do care for you. I told her, you know what? Go around to the liquor store, grab a box of condom, put one leg at ten and one leg at two, and just say, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Isn't that great or what? I love that. And then, and then there's more to it. You said, right? Yeah. On one on one class, you said there's no such thing as magic vagina. That's right. Okay. So, few days later, a week later, she goes, "Hey, honey, you know what? When are we getting married?" Right? I told her, "You know what? You have a family doctor," and she says, "Yeah. Well, go make an appointment. We won't get your vagina fixed." So she made an appointment. And then she calls me the next day, James, you know what? So and so we got an appointment. I need to go with I need to go with you. And then you know what I told her? What? It's not working out. <laughs> <laughs> it is not working out. I gotta go. So did you dump her? Hell yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm thirty five, you know, and then she's only what, twenty five? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't need it, you know? I don't. Like the like the on the on the Craigslist says, you know, my money is increasing as in she's not. That's right. She's, you know She's a depreciating what? asset, that's right. Exactly. So why would I need to go and spend, you know, invest on that? <laughs> I you love that. Saying? Yes. So I you know, I've been one on one student about a four months, you know? So that's what I've been doing. How great is that? And then, and then, you know what? Actually, not today, tomorrow night. I got another chick. She's only twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> she is only twenty three. How and I, great! And it, yeah. And Tom, you know what? I really appreciate what you're doing. I really do. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing Before, it as a public service. No, no, no. This, this is more than public service. You know, I really do appreciate what you're doing. You know, and I hope you keep up the good work. Well, thank you, and congratulations on getting through Alexi Hente to get in here today. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of tough. He hung up on me twice. But <laughs> <laughs> he hung up on me twice, but you know, I tried to call in because, you know, I really appreciate you, what you're doing. You know, you just keep up the good work. <laughs> thank you, James. <laughs> hey, Tom, you know what? Can you blow me up? Of course I can. Tom is our telephone number. It's Nate on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, Nate. How are you today, sir? Do you care? I absolutely and fully care. Thank you to you and Dean for taking my call today. Sure. Hey, listen, I am a big fan of the show, and I love your opening monologue. I, I love reciting it along with you, and I love how you kind of change up the little Experiences, so you kind of get thrown off. You can't quite say it right, but it, I happen to notice today and a couple times before you stop saying free when you say telephone number. Is there a reason for that? Yes, yes. Uh, most people now use cell phones with, yes. and they have free long distance. Ah, so the concept of a toll-free call for most people is superfluous. Certainly, the people who call this show. Uh huh. And so uh, there's no point in saying it anymore. Uh, just like years ago, uh, we got rid of our fax number. Because who sends faxes except old people who don't know how to use email? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So people who listen to our show never send faxes. They just don't. Makes sense. Same thing with toll-free. I mean, people are going to make the phone call whether it's toll-free or not. That's true. I've been sitting here contemplating how much I'm spending and realizing that it was not toll free in the first place anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right. You're paying uh, for the airtime for this call. That's exactly correct. Hey, listen, I really appreciate your show. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Like It's 101. I, I believe I have my bachelor's. I'm going for my master's. Very good. Uh, I used a lot of attendance to uh, help a friend of mine through a really messy divorce from a nasty whore of a wife that he had. 
I, uh, I even used your toaster analogy as a, uh, a way to help him understand why he needed to DTV. Oh, I love that. So, and uh, trying to use trying to use some of my uh, my smart I'm the brother-in-law, but it's not working as well. So, you know, I'm just going to keep on listening, and you keep on preaching the good word, and all you gentlemen out there, listen to Tom Likas because this man knows exactly what he's talking about. Thank you for that, Nate. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Big Tom? How you doing, sir? Doing okay, Robert. Great. Thanks for keeping me company in this parking lot of uh, traffic getting down to 60 East. Oh, well, the, well, with the weather in Southern California the, today, I mean, my God, traffic home tonight must be horrific. You know, it's not nice. Which is not great for our business, by the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, and CBS has been seeding the clouds. Every every Friday, we're going to be attempting to uh, manipulate the weather to keep you in your car longer. That's I, a good thing. Yeah, well, I think so. That's a great thing. Thank you. It makes You make our life a lot easier while sitting in this horrible traffic of a commute. Um, on my way to go pick up my hot date for the Black Sabbath concert, I was asking Dean if you guys are going to be able to make it there tonight. Uh, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to make it tonight. I think we've got uh, other plans. Man, I got uh, my two box seats, extra tickets waiting for you to get in. Oh, is that so? I'm in box B with the PSAV box. Is that so? Well, yes, uh, somehow, where, where are they playing tonight? They're the Staples Center. They're at Staples Center. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be at Staples Center two of the next three nights at hockey. Oh. And then go. Sunday I'm going to be at hockey uh, at the Honda Center in Anaheim. So I'm I'm going to be out the next three nights. Okay, well, you'll see me quite often at the Staples Center. I just hope I get a chance to have a beer with the, with the great dad. Well, I'll be at the oh, Kings dad. game tomorrow night, as I always am. Absolutely, Tom. Um, she's calling right now. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How are you? I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Hey, Tom, I just wanted to uh, speak with you about uh, next week's Friday's uh, uh, Playboy Mansion uh, event that you have going on. Yes. I was actually, last night, we were at Howl of the Moon, and uh, your uh, my kitties were there. Yes, and um, they actually chose one of the girls that was bo shaking the booty up up the stage, and um, I, I spoke with uh, a couple of your kitties and uh, actually to Shauna, and I asked her. She said, "Well, we we're only taking girls," and uh, I was like, "So what can I do?" She's like, "Well, I don't know." I was like, "How about if I talk to Tom?" She's like, "Okay." Yeah, well, so that's I, why I'm calling you to see. Uh, if I I have no tickets. Okay. I don't ever have tickets. That's handled by the radio station. Right, right. Okay. And the radio station has a variety of contests uh, to give these tickets away, and I'm really not sure how the contests work or what time they're on, but that's how you get in. All right, okay. I have to follow up with that. But um, on the other note, I just wanted to thank you. I've been I've been listening to you for about the past year. I was with this girl for about a year and a half. Um, I listened to you for about two, three months. After that, I dumped there because she popped the question, hey, when are you gonna? When are we gonna get engaged? And um, I was like, "Well, honey, listen, that's not even in my vocabulary right now." What? <laughs> I'm only 23 years old. I'm not trying to get caught up with that. So uh, I just, I just had to let her go. Very nice. And since then, I've been, you know, I've been getting some, some ass. Just be a and free it, agent, it, Steve. Be a free agent. Don't have a girlfriend. Oh, since then, single and ready to mingle. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks to you. Very nice. I'm very proud. Thank you very much, Tom. Well, can me uh, can you take me out, uh, Kobe style? Yes, I can, Steve. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, John. First want to say thanks for being on the radio. If not, I would have jumped off the freeway on this hell Friday with the rain. As you know, I'm doing it as a public service. Thank you, Tom. So, anyways, I'm 21, right? And a couple of buddies of mine decided to 
hey, let's invest in a house. You know, they're cheap right now. Everyone's getting them. Um, so they try to get me in it. Uh, it turns out at the last moment, I decided to flake out. You know, they didn't do enough research. I didn't think they were well prepared. So I didn't go through with it, but they did. And, man, am I ever glad I didn't go through with it because they ended up on a fixed arm rate and all that horrible stuff that's happening with all the houses right now. So. Wow. Well, I, you know, I've advised more than one person on that. I told people to stay out of the real estate market, uh, you know, uh, for the year before everything started to crash, and uh, a lot of people didn't listen to me. Right. And, I mean, I don't know the market either, so I'm not going to jump into something with just a week's research. I'm going to take my time, find the best deal for me. So, And plus, I listen to you. They don't. So that's what, that's what you get when you're a faithful Tom Lake is listener. Good stuff happens to you. That's exactly right, John. Yep. So anyway, just want to share that with you, and, and thanks for keeping me out of that. If not, I would have been stuck in one of those ugly mortgages and ruined my credit for the next couple of years. But thanks to you, I did it. John, I'm very proud of you. Thank you for that. Daniel, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Papa Pooting, how you doing? <laughs> doing <Mr>. okay. <laughs> Mr. Likas. Hey, okay. we're, out, we're on the air. We can't use I'm that word so on the sorry. air. I'm so sorry, Tom. This man knows his his his, his women. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Tom, long time listener, first time caller. Thanks, uh, thank you and Dean for putting me on. You know, I gotta thank you for a uh, recent victory I had last night. You always talk about just being fly on the women. I have a coworker I've uh, been talking to at work for a little bit, and uh, you know, just putting in my. We've taken a few lunch breaks and everything. Uh, just trying to get personal, know me a little bit, but uh, I keep my priorities straight. I got work and school, and that's all I'm concerned with. And, uh, you know, we talk a little bit, and she really wanted to get uh, into my personal life, girlfriend and everything, and uh, I just stay quiet. You know, I'm single, and uh, that's all it is. And uh, I could tell she wanted to tell me something, but I wasn't. I, I didn't want to hear it. And I could tell that it was kind of stressing her, so I was kind of reading that, and she really had something she wanted to get off her chest. I was like, you know what? It's something that's going to change the way I'm thinking, and I'm not going to want to do this. So she's already 35, no kids, single, and I'm 25. So it's not really a problem there, but I'm still thinking, you know, something's got to be wrong with this. Picture's too perfect. Gorgeous body. Everything's working for this girl. Now, we go out to lunch uh, yesterday, and she wants to hang out after work, and so we go. And uh, we end up having a few drinks, and she comes back to my place, and... Uh, to be done, handle it, and uh, in the end, she's like, "Well, I really want to tell you, you know, what we've been meaning to talking about, uh, talk about. Well, what she's been meaning to talk about." And so she finally lets it out that she still lives at home with her ex. Uh huh. If he, so if he is, if he, it. if he is her ex at all. Uh, I know exactly. So either. Either she's doing something uh, behind closed doors that she didn't want it. But the thing is, I read it because you always said, Tom, watch what these women say to you and watch what they're anxious to tell you and watch just everything about them because they're sly ones. They're really smart. And uh, some people may call you a chauvinist, but I just call you experienced. Exactly and, right. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I just took your advice and did everything. And in the morning, she's all mushy and everything. And she's like, let's go have breakfast and everything. And I was like, you know what? I'm not feeling good. I got to run errands. It's raining. You better get ready. I'm, I think you got to work today. And <laughs> totally flipped the script on her. And now she's all wondering, hey, when are we going to hang out again? When are we going to, you know? I was like, eh, no, no, no. Papa Tom told me there's too much luggage and not to bag you on my flight. So uh, sorry about that. Look at this, Daniel. Knocking it out. Thank you so much for the call. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.